Hey guys, Mr. Goomber here. Um, today I'm going to be doing a lesson on area, the area of two-dimensional shapes. And this is going to be a, you know, a precursor to what we're really starting in our unit, which is volume and like surface area of 3D shapes. But for you to understand that, you really have to, you know, be comfortable with working at least in two dimensions, which is, you know, like the beginnings of geometry for, for upper elementary. And um, so today we're going to be reviewing just the area of rectangles and the area of triangles, which you maybe is a review for a lot of you, but I hope that, you know, we can go a little bit deeper than maybe you were able to go when you were learning this, these formulas for the first time in like, you know, third, fourth, or fifth grade. Okay, so let me show you my new studio, my new filming studio. Click. So, as you can see, I have set up a virtual classroom here because, you know, we still can't meet in person. Um, but I think it has a lot of, of advantages. So, plus, I now have multiple camera angles, like this close-up camera. You can see that. This is going to be a lot of fun for both of us. Uh, so, let's just dive right into it. Here is basically the, the worksheets we'll be working on today. We're going to be talking about the area of two-dimensional shapes, and we're just doing the simplest of shapes, rectangles and triangles. Uh, I'll make another video later because, you know, when we're exploring volume, you know what's going to come up is circles and spheres, which are a little bit more complex. Um, but let's just start with these. So, a rectangle. The area of a rectangle, hopefully you know, but if not, for the first time, I will reveal to you its very simple formula. Area equals the base times the height. So A equals B times H. So to find the, the area of a two-dimensional shape is kind of asking, like, how much paint would it take to cover the shape? Like, how much space is there within 2D? So 2D is, of course, flat, okay? Let's come over here. A flat two-dimensional shape, meaning, like, on a piece of paper. It, you couldn't hold it in real life from, I mean, like, technically, a, two, a piece of paper is, like, the closest we could get to it. Uh, and actually, we're going to start at problem number two, because that's the way I made this worksheet. Number two says, you know, what is the area of a picture frame that is 10 meters tall and 5 meters long? So let's just use that formula we just learned. First, I will draw it out, because if you're doing a word problem and you can draw it, you should. So this, in this word problem, the picture frame is 5 meters long or 5 meters wide. and 10 meters tall, okay, and this is going to be a rectangle, which is implied by the fact that it's a picture frame and that it's in the middle of a lesson about area of rectangles. Okay, 5 uh, and 10, the, the formula, again, is area equals base times height, so, you know, area equals base times height, and what's our units? It says meters, so let, let's remember that, because when we're doing you know, these sorts of problems, we really gotta remember to track our units. So, base time height, 5 times 10. So our area is going to equal 5 meters, you know, times 10 meters. And then what will our answer look like? Uh, 5 times 10 is 50, so A equals the area of this picture frame is 50 meters squared. Okay, and kind of, uh, I don't know, a pro tip that I want you to consider when we're learning about area is how to visualize it, okay? Because, you know, ideally we can move beyond just you memorizing a formula without understanding, like, the basis of the formula, and uh, let's look at that. So, when I have, like, why, why is the question? that I multiply the base times the height to find the area of a shape. Well, something that helps me is when I visualize, when I visualize this shape, okay, and I can see that the top is five, like this line is, is five meters, and then the side, you know, this, this up and down is 10 meters. You could see this as, I mean, okay, so think about this. If I took a five meter line and I needed to paint this whole shape, I could use that five meter line over and over, right? I could just keep drawing a five meter line, okay, over and over. And I would just be like, I need a bunch of these five meter lines. 
and to cover up this huge, you know, picture frame, this shape. And what I do is I, like, you ask yourself, like, how many of these five meter lines do I need? Well, you know, obviously it's not 10 lines, at least not with the, the you know, the size of the current lines. But the answer is you need 10 meters worth of lines. It takes like 10, like the amount of lines you're going to have to draw is 10 meters worth. You just keep drawing the lines until you have 10 meters of these five meter lines, which, you know, mathematically would be five meters times these 10 meters. Okay, so that's, that's how I've always visualized it when I'm doing an area problem. Uh, and I think that's a good way to visualize it. I'm sure there's another way. but that way is going to work really well when we get to three-dimensional shapes in our next, like, really our next lesson when we start dealing with rectangular prisms, like, you know, physical boxes and stuff. Uh, so keep that in mind. Let's look at triangles. Ugh. Triangles. Triangles, the formula for a triangle is area equals one-half base times height. So A equals one-half base times height. And, uh... I want you to notice a couple things. One, the formula for a triangle is literally half the formula of a rectangle because base times height, base times height. They're, they're the same formula except for triangle, you have to have it. You, you divide the answer by two, whatever the base times the height is. And something that students often ask me is they're like, well, do I have to take half the base times the full height? Or is it half of the height times the full base? Or is it, you know, the base and the height, and I have to multiply those together, and then I have it. And the answer is it doesn't matter. When you're multiplying three numbers like that, it you could do it in any order, and you can think of it any way, and it, you'd get the same answer. Because, you know, it, it's the same reason why multiplying 5 times 6 times 2 is the same thing as 2 times 6 times 5. Like, like it, whichever order you're multiplying it in doesn't change it, okay? Let's, you know, let's do a quick example problem. Ugh. Okay, so here is a triangle problem. It's actually number three, which hopefully you can see. Number three says, how much ink will cover a triangular magnet that is eight centimeters tall and six centimeters wide? So here's the triangle, which, you know, my picture I can see right now is not gonna match an eight centimeters tall and six centimeters wide triangle. But actually, that brings up an important point. If you're ever doing a math problem in like a math book or something, sometimes their drawings aren't going to be accurate. What you you have to believe the numbers, like trust in the numbers. If the mathematician or the book or the test says this triangle is eight, you know, eight uh, centimeters tall and six centimeters wide, you know, use that, use those numbers for your math. Which is maybe another. You know, like, don't eyeball it. Like, if you can do, solve something mathematically, do it. Uh, so, 8 centimeters tall, 6 centimeters wide. Our formula, once again, is, this is for triangles, area equals 1 half times the base times the height. Okay? And our base is 6, right? And our height is 8. So, what does that look like? A equals one half times six times our height of eight and we get you know you, again i can do these in any order so i'm going to do it in this order i'm going to first say one half times six which would say a equals three times eight and then our times tables tells us that three times eight is 24. but not just 24 because we have to put the units so 24 centimeters 24 centimeters squared, okay? Because I'm multiplying, you know, these centimeters times these centimeters. When we're doing surface area, we're gonna find that, I, I think it's like always something squared. That That's just the measurement we use for, you know, because you have like a line of centimeters and you're multiplying them all times a line of other centimeters. So that's centimeters squared. Uh, and when we get to volume, it's everything's cubed. You'll, you'll see, okay. Before we move on to really the last problem of the day, which is going to introduce, by the way, what we're doing this unit, which is using simple shapes, like using our knowledge of how to find the area of simple shapes to find the area of weird, you know, irregular shapes. I kind of want to talk about an interesting thing that I've noticed, and that hopefully you will notice, and this will help you remember, 
the area, like why the area of a rectangle is is double the area of a triangle. Or here, look. This is this is how we're diving deeper into it because you know, you guys are seventh graders and you should like kind of already know these formulas. But let's go let's go deeper now. Something that maybe your your lower elementary teachers couldn't or didn't explain, or maybe they did explain and you didn't get it. Let's talk about why is the area of a triangle exactly one half the area of a rectangle? Like, what is, what's the odds of that? Like, how does that work out? Well, it goes like this. Let me show a couple examples. A one. Let's try two right triangles and tell me what you notice. So this is a right triangle, okay? And I'm like, oh, I forgot the area, I forgot the formula. Like, oh, there's too many mathematical formulas. How will I ever know the area of this triangle? I mean, and hopefully in this situation, you at least know the formula for a rectangle, because it's as simple as it gets, right? The base times the height. So take this right triangle. What if I had, you know, two of them? I'm going to draw two identical right triangles, okay? Mostly identical. And notice that one right triangle plus another right triangle, given that I had drawn it perfectly, okay, uh, form actually a rectangle. So that if you were finding the area of this rectangle and you were like, oh, you know, the of this rectangle, and I know that formula because it's you know just simply the base, the base times the height of you know four. Or we'll say eight, and this looks longer than eight, so we'll say ten. Okay, eight and ten. Oh, you can't see my eight. I'll just move the camera a little bit. Okay. So, oh, I can find I can find the area of this rectangle, right? Eight times ten is eighty. So what if I only have half, what if I only have half, you know, that's where the, the formula of a triangle comes in, right? You, you take the same eight times the same eight and you just divide it by half because we can see that this right triangle is literally half of a rectangular shape. Now, clever students or students that have watched this multiple times may realize that I've specifically used a right triangle because it does move it does like fold very nicely into a rectangle. So what if the question is, I don't have a right triangle, but I have a random, I have a random other triangle. Okay. What if I have another type of triangle? Well, let's see what happens. Let me draw a, you know, a random triangle, uh, like a, Clearly not a triangle. Okay, like this. You know, maybe that's an isosceles triangle. It looks like these two, two top areas are the same. These two top lines are, you know, the same distance. But they certainly are not. This certainly isn't a right triangle. So what happens if I line up two of these? Well, let me draw a second one. Oops. Let me draw a second one. Okay. So. What happens if I play with these triangles? Can I make, you know, any, oh, what shape is that? You might notice that is a parallelogram when I take these two triangles and put them together. Or what if, you know, you know, I can put them, have put them together like a different way, right? What shape is that? It's also a parallelogram, okay? Yes. And again, you know, the question is, how is that useful? yet for proving, you know, that a triangle is, is exactly half the area of a rectangle, let me show you. Get back to, oh no, no, let me do, maybe over here. Ah, oh, no, no, I think back to the straw camera. Okay, camera C. Uh, let me show you why, once you have a parallelogram, the formula for a rectangle also works. Because, you know, again, there's so many area formulas that we can't expect you to memorize all of them, although it would be great if you did. Kind of a low priority skill. If you've memorized, you know, even just 
if you memorize rectangles and you're comfortable playing with geometry, which is hopefully what this video is introducing you to the idea of, you can actually solve for a lot of the like more weird shaped complex formulas. Like take the parallelogram, for example. A parallelogram, it's, you know, two parallel lines. Okay. And what's the formula for that? Well, notice this. Okay. If I take any parallelogram, I can actually, if I draw a, so I'm like looking at this and I, I want to find, you know, ideally rectangles because rectangles like is a one formula based on sight that I, I can intuitively know. So how can I turn this parallelogram into a rectangle? Well, if I draw a line straight up here, okay, and I draw a line straight down here, boom. This middle area is now a rectangle or possibly a square, which is, you know, a rectangle. And that's going to be, you know, something I can very mathematically solve. And what am I left with on the sides? Do you notice? Well, I drew a line straight up and straight down. So these, you know, side triangles are actually now, let me, I mean, like they are right triangles, right? Which we already proved earlier that how do you find the area of a right triangle? I mean, because two of them, if we have two right triangles, you know, remember, notice what you can do if I cut off. Oops. If I cut this right triangle and I'm like, you know, cut it right here. And I just, just cut this, this blue right triangle off. Okay. And if I glued that on this side, I'm just going to take this right triangle and move it over here. Actually, I can, you know, let's, let's physically, oh, I had tapped those on accident. Well, whatever. I'll just draw it again. So this blue right triangle. If I drew it over here, okay, so pretend like this triangle is this triangle now, and then this triangle is all gone. Like, what does my new shape look like? It's actually, and you'll see this the more you play with it, a, like my new yellow shape is how I've, you know, butchered this parallelogram and turned it into, like, a pretty simple rectangle. And what you'll find is because I lost this much distance over here and then put it down here, the formula for a parallelogram, you know, spoiler, is just the formula for a rectangle. So uh, when you find the area of a parallelogram, it's just, you know, the, the, the base, just this yellow area down here, times the height to find its area. And since we know that a parallelogram can be made by two weird shaped rectangles, right? Two of these, you know, non right angle rectangles can always be formed into a parallelogram, no matter how you do it. Uh, what that means is, I, I guess that's like just proving that, a, you know, a triangle, we can really see it as half of a rectangle or half of a parallelogram, which have the very simple formula of base times height. Okay. How about trapezoids? And the reason I have included trapezoids is they're great. Again, like both the parallelogram and the trapezoid example are introducing you to the concept of splitting apart weird shapes or unusual shapes into shapes that we can find the area of. So again, with this trapezoid, you know, I don't expect you to necessarily to memorize the formula of a trapezoid because I don't even know that off the top of my head. I always have to look it up. But what I can do, even if I don't have my trapezoid formula internet next to me, is I can always cut this trapezoid into, you know, this right triangle over here, this rectangle in the middle, in the middle, oops, this rectangle in the middle, and this right triangle on this side. And these simpler shapes are definitely something that I know the formula of, okay? That's, these, these are things I can manage. So let's go to like, you know, the final challenge problem of the day. This actually is like seventh grade level-ish stuff. This is like the intro. And you're gonna see it's because we're gonna do this using three dimensions next lesson. But basically, how do we find the area of these weird shapes? Like this. 
what, there's not even a name for this shape. That's how unusual this shape is. What is the area of this shape? And they give us some, you know, some numbers, eight centimeters, 18 centimeters, 22, two is this little thing here, and 10. Okay, how do we find its area? Well, we divide it up into shapes that we are familiar with. Okay, and so right off the bat, I would divide this like this, thereby giving me a rectangle at the bottom. Oops, a rectangle at the bottom. I would divide it like, if I draw a line straight down here, okay, click. Okay, what do you notice? Well, I've now divided into three, dis three distinct shapes. So to find the area of this whole, you know, random shape, I simply have to find the area of this square, this rectangle, and this triangle up here, and then add all three of them together. So let's do that. First, uh, let's start with the easy one. This, this big rectangle down here, I can see the base is 20, and its height, 18 represents, you know, the height of the whole thing. So this rectangle has a height of, let me, let me color it, I guess, so we can refer to it better. This red rectangle down here has a height of 10, okay? So the formula for that is going to be, and we'll write it in red, you know, 10 times 20. So this is just of that red rectangle, 10 times 20, gives me, oh, and it's centimeters. So it gives me an answer of 200 centimeters squared. Okay, next. Let's do the next easiest one, which is this shape, I think. I mean, obviously, you know, rectangles are as, as easy as it gets, which was, you know, kind of the point. Here, it has a height of, it doesn't tell us, so we'll have to solve it. Well, I can see that the full length of this line is 18, and, you know, just this, just the red subsection is 10, so how much is this missing section? We can see that this missing section must be 8, because, you know, and the way I got that is I say this 18, since all of it is 18, and I have to subtract this 10, because I know this, this red, because this is 10, and it's a rectangle, so they're the same, the same height. What's left is that this side must equal 8. Okay. Uh, which, you know, then we can see that this blue square, since it looks like I'm going with blue, is 8 times 8. So the area of that square, let's get a blue marker, is going to be 8 times 8, which gives me 64 centimeters squared. Okay, and last up is our triangle, which we now have the height of. And we'll, we'll use yellow for the triangle because, well, you know, let's use a new color. Let's use, uh, <laughs> shapes, purple, purple, I guess. Okay, so for this purple triangle, what do we notice? Well, we need to know its base and its height. Its height, this carries over since this is like a square. Actually, yeah. So we know its height is eight. So let's let's record that before we forget. Okay, but what is its base? Well, we have to do a little bit more math here, because they didn't tell us this distance, but what we do know is that this larger line, this whole line, is equal to 20. So 20, and then we're going to cut away 2 centimeters, right? We can see that this little thing here is 2 centimeters. So if I cut away that from 20, I have 18. And I also need to cut away, we can see that this line, how big is this? If this one up here is 8, then this one right here is 8. So, you know, 20 minus 2 is 18, minus this 8, leaves us with 10. Yes, good job. So 10. Okay, let's find, you know, the area of this triangle. And I will find a purple marker to stay consistent. Click. Uh, 8 times 10. Oh wait, it's the area of a triangle, so it's 1 half 8 times 10, because... I can now visualize that as, you know, being half of a rectangle's formula. So one half of eight times 10 is the same thing as saying, you know, one half of 40. And what's one half of 40? What's 40 divided by two? It's 20. So 
20 centimeters. Okay. And, oh, I made a mistake there. Because <laughs> I was already just doing the math in my head. Not, let's try that one again. So, 8 times 10 is 80. This is why we have rule 5, which is it's okay to make mistakes. And I don't want to spend the time to edit this. Uh, one half of 80 gives us our our area of 40 centimeters squared. And that is, you know, the area of the purple triangle. That's how much paint it would take to cover that. And let's, I mean, like, so the, the area of the full, you know, weird shape is... 200, well, 200 plus 64 plus 40. So what does that look like? You know, 200 plus 64 plus 40 means that the total area of that shape is 403. 304 centimeters squared. Okay. Whew. Good job. Good show. Thanks for watching, everyone. This has been, you know, lesson, our lesson on area of triangles and rectangles. And hopefully you're more comfortable, you know, playing with it. Like, you're going to see that as we explore geometry, both for two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes, you, you have to be, I guess, prepared. Because this is like the, the critical thinking or creative, the creativity in mathematics that a lot of books slash curriculum trying to teach you is that, you know, we can take these like base tools that we have and then apply them to solve, you know, more and more complex mathematical problems. So I'll see you guys next week. And cut.